a very good afternoon here from the airport of Schiphol, Amsterdam. My name is Robin and I want to thank you very much for taking the time to watch this new video of mine. I'm here at Schiphol to fly with KLM on their Airbus A330 to Edmonton in Canada. But first, let's go check out the brand new KLM Crown Lounge here at the airport. It was just renovated and in May we already had a look at the first half, but apparently the whole lounge is open right now. So let's go check out the lounge, then the A330 and then on to Edmonton. So please, come with me. I took this flight halfway through November and Amsterdam Schiphol Airport was completely in festive mood for Christmas. Many people who've flown out of Amsterdam know about the famous Fokker 100 on display on the observation deck. There is however another aircraft, or at least half an aircraft on display. As well as a main landing gear section and engine cowling from a McDonnell Douglas MD-11, you can go inside a McDonnell Douglas DC-9 and check out the cockpit. It seems to be more focused on kids, but as an adult it makes me as excited to visit the cockpit as 12 year old me. And although it has a KLM livery painted on it, the DC-9 has never actually flown for KLM, but it has flown for Delta and TWA, which is pretty neat. The Christmas spirit was even more prominent down in Airside. Whoever was in charge of that at Chipple has done a great job, but we're not here to watch the Christmas lights, so let's go straight to the brand new lounge. The first phase of the lounge had opened in December of 2018 and finally had its grand opening last November. The lounge is accessible to all passengers in business class on SkyTeam flights or with SkyTeam Elite Plus status. At the entrance you're greeted by about 5000 Delft Blue Houses that everyone who's ever flown on KLM Business Class knows. Very impressive. Though it might not be the best use of real estate when it comes to seating, it sure looks great. KLM has done a great job in designing the lounge for the eye, not so much practical. The new part is mostly all about food. It looks like KLM really chooses the food on display based on color, as everything is very colorful. It wasn't easy to find a spot to sit in this area, but once you have a seat, there are plenty of power outlets all around. The new section also includes a coffee bar with baristas, but all other food and drinks here are self-service. The bar upstairs hasn't changed much since my last visit. It still looks amazing. There has been one minor change made since the grand opening though. All drinks here now have to be paid for including drinks like soft drinks and basic beers and wines you do get complimentary downstairs. I would have expected KLM to have a system like Delta has in their Skyclops, where only premium drinks have to be paid for. I certainly don't mind KLM charging for certain services in the lounge, but with the current system, all upstairs remains unused and downstairs is packed. I do recommend you pay a visit to the terrace upstairs with a great view on the ramp. It's free? and great for AFE geeks. Our aircraft today is a 9 year old Airbus A330-200. KLM has 13 A330 aircraft of which 8 of the smaller Dash 200 variants. KLM has just renovated the interior on the A330 fleet and I really wanted to try these new seats.
However, for some odd reason, KLM has decided not to replace the economy class seats on two of their 13 A330. Unfortunately, for both outbound and return flight, I flew on the exact same plane, which was one of the two still with the old interior. For the record, some of the footage on this trip report was recorded on the outbound flight and some on the return flight, but they're both on the exact same aircraft and the exact same seat. Anyway, for now, let's enjoy takeoff from Amsterdam. The KLM Airbus A330-200 has room for 268 passengers in two classes. Starting with 214 seats in economy and 36 in economy comfort, where we are seated today. And lastly, there are 36 lie flat business class seats in a 2-2-2 layout. Unlike economy on this aircraft, the business class seats did get replaced. The first round of service came really quickly after takeoff and came with a pair of headphones, a postcard with a discount voucher for purchases from the GT3 shop, as well as a bottle of water and a wet towel. Not long after, a hot dinner was served. The choice was between beef meatballs or vegetarian pasta with sun-dried tomato sauce and shredded cheese, and I chose the latter. The pasta was really yummy, but I really don't like olives. And if I would have known that before, I probably would have picked the meatballs. The tray came with a salad, a box with some cheese and crackers, and a chocolate vanilla cake. Honestly, this is a really good meal for an economy class. KLM really works to improve their meals it seems. And another thing I really like is the cutlery, which is wrapped in a paper towel. Although the cutlery is plastic, the delivery really elevates the experience. This and the wet towel are usually only things seen in business class. Well done. Shortly after dinner, the crew does another service round with coffee, tea and a digestif. For once, I decided not to drink any alcohol on a flight. My seat for both flights was 8A, an economy comfort seat. The seats and the service are identical to regular economy seats, but come with an extra 4 inches or 10 centimeters of legroom. The benefit of the A330 is the lack of a middle seat on these rows. Even with the old interior, you get a personal video screen with an adjustable viewing angle in case your forward neighbor reclines. Instead of a touchscreen, this old school screen is still operated with buttons and a remote, at which we'll have a look at in a minute.
the seat does include a USB port. The tray table is pretty large, a very important here in economy comfort, it can be pulled a few inches towards you. Down in the seat pocket, you can find an air sickness bag, a safety card for this aircraft, the Holland Herald, KLM's own in-flight magazine, and Sky High, the duty-free magazine. And unsurprisingly, the legroom here in economy comfort is fantastic. Underneath the seat is one universal power outlet that you'll have to share with your neighbor. With views on Greenland like that, you don't really need in-flight entertainment, but we'll have a look at the remote anyway. This is still one of those seats with the remote in the armrest that you touch with your hip every time, and you need a converter to use any headphones, but at least they are supplied with the headphones after takeoff. I have never really understood what the keyword on the remote is for, and I found that you needed to press the buttons real hard to get any response from the system. The reflection of any light makes watching anything pretty hard as well. Still not many people know that you can go and grab snacks from the galley and on this flight they had chocolate, squeezed pretzels and some more of that cake we had before. Before landing one more meal service was served. This was a hot pizza roll and an apple roll. Really delicious. For the whole economy cabin, there are five lavatories and occasionally there were queues, but they were kept pretty neat throughout the flight. I really think that KLM has made some questionable choices with the bar in the lounge and with these two A330 aircraft that did not get the new economy class. This is reason enough for me to avoid the KLM Airbus A330-200 for now as I don't want to play this game of Russian Roulette with a 25% chance of losing and ending up with these old seats. Anyway, after landing, I will share my final two cents on this flight. Well, after about an eight hour of our flight, we are back in Edmonton, Alberta. And I have to say, I really like the KLM Crown Lounge. It's amazing, it's big, it's very modern, it has a lot of seating, a lot of different seating. The food looks really good as well. The one thing I do really have to note is that it's just simply really weird that there's a big bar upstairs where everything you have to pay for. And unlike Delta, for instance, where in the lounge you have basic drinks like their default draft beer and basic wines and all soft drinks are free and if you want to have any premium drinks you can pay for it but it's not like that with the KLM Crown Lounge and for that reason it is completely empty upstairs and packed downstairs. Then during the flight the A330 is actually pretty quiet I have to say uh, but they recently retrofitted the aircraft with new seats and I thought they would also retrofit the aircraft with new economy seats that didn't happen, so pretty similar to what they did with a 747. So the seats are still old, they don't have a touch screen and they still have that old remote in the armrest that you always touch with your hip. Pretty annoying, but overall the flight was very comfortable. 
I got to watch two movies that I hadn't seen before, so that was pretty cool as well. And I had some amazing views over Greenland and over Canada as well. So overall, it was a good flight. The crew on board of the flight, which the majority was male, which was really interesting to me to see. I had I don't think I've ever seen that before in a long haul flight. Um, they were so fantastic. They were so friendly. Uh, I had a great time on on this flight. 10 out of 10, I would definitely fly it again, though I would love to see KLM either uh, to replace these seats for better ones that they have on the Dreamliners or on the 787 or replace the whole aircraft on this route uh, because I'll probably be flying between Amsterdam and Edmonton more often than this. Anyway, that's it for me for today. Uh, I'm going to head home right now, get some rest and then uh, I'll be seeing you next week. So if you like the video, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more like this, please subscribe to my channel. And otherwise, see you next week.